All right, for module number two, we're going to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of working with this unique market. Now, I'm going to be honest right here and come forth and be clean with everybody. Well, first of all, personally, I don't broker anymore. I manage a brokerage that has about 50 agents, so I don't personally brokerage. Personally brokerage? <laughs> I don't personally broker. Thank you. Um, but the last four or five years that I did, uh, I was not a fan of working with first time home buyers. Um, I'm going to come out and say that I know there are people out there. I've got several in my agency that just love dealing with first time home buyers. I'm going to tell you, I am not one of those. If you are. I congratulate you and thank you because that is definitely a niche that needs to be fulfilled. So let's talk a little bit about the pros and the cons of working with this niche group. All right. So we're going to start off with the advantages or the pros that reasons why people like working with the first time home buyer. So for the agent, there is obviously personal reasons that the agent loves to work with first time home buyers. Most notably, the biggest perk for an agent is that they are helping a new family create or find the American dream. Home ownership has been defined and said before as the American dream. If a person is involved in that, in some manner, there is a lot of personal fulfillment that an agent gets to experience. You get to be the hero, all right? So I understand that there is a huge amount of personal reasons why most agents do that. Now, they can come from many reasons like Oh, when I bought my first home, I had a good agent. Therefore, that's my reason. Or, you know, I didn't understand the process and somebody explained it to me. So there are a lot of reasons on why you get that personal fulfillment. And in essence, it really doesn't matter because it all boils down to it makes you feel good. And that is a great feeling to understand that you have helped some young burgeoning family create the American dream by helping them in their first home purchase. The second personal reason, and let's be honest here, you generate income, all right? We all know this and we all understand, but nobody ever wants to talk about this part of the field because it they think it feels icky or makes them feel uh, bad or, or I, I don't understand, but you very seldom ever hear an agent when you ask, Hey, why are you in this business? Not one of them says to make money. Well, they do, but it's never the first one. They always say, I love to help people. I love real estate. I love sales. But when it boils down to it, we're here to make money. We all have to survive. We all have to live. We all have to pay our electric bill. So one of the pros with working with first time home buyers is that you are going to get paid for that. Okay. Now there are some other reasons first time home buyers may be a target market for some agents. Typically first time home buyers can get qualified easier. They, because there are many loan programs out there designed for specifically low to moderate income. And we're going to talk about those later in modules four and five or six. And I'm actually going to attach a resource guide to this course for you as well. But typically 620 credit score, a DTI of 41%. Those are very common and relaxed rules. Now I will tell you FHA actually can go down to lower than 620. There are rumors that they can do 500. Yes, I said 500. 
Now, there's a lot of rules that are stipulated. Um, I think the amount down goes up a little bit. Obviously, the interest rate would go up. But typically, these loan programs are geared towards the lower income to moderate income, which is going to be your first time home buyer. They also have lower down payment requirements. If you remember, I told you a minute ago, the NAR stat said the average down payment was only 5%. So that allows these younger families to get into the houses easier because of less money. Now let's talk about the downside or the cons to working with first time home buyers. A lot of first time home buyers go through what's called analysis paralysis. They really can't make a decision. They are so inundated and overwhelmed with the number of homes, the number of choices, the process. <clears throat> they are going to get caught up in trying to uh, analyze everything, the market, the local district, the interest rates. Uh, that's where you've got to step in and try and cut through all the chaff and get to the wheat and go, hey, here's the down, here's the true story. All right. So there is a lot of unsure uh, decisions that are made. Typically with first time home buyers, there's a lot of interfering outside help. And I used help in parentheses. We all know who I'm talking about, right? Parents. Typically, a lot of first time home buyers are younger. Therefore, parents still play an influential role in their house buying decisions. So there are two ways that you can either deal with the parent. Now, I am not going to suggest which way is better. And it kind of depends. You can use both of these. Obviously, one way to uh, dodge the parent trap is to bring the parents on board as though they were one of the buyers. Include them in the meetings, include them in the showings, include them in the conversations. The second approach that you can take, which is about 180 degree opposite of that, is to forcefully say, you're not involved, I need to talk to my clients. All right? I personally have said once before i was walking through a house showing it to a young single uh, female and every time she looked at something her parents were there and her father kept saying well that looks broke or that's cracked or you know i don't like the way this is sitting on the lot and i will tell you i lost my cool and I literally turned to the father and I said, and how much of the house payment are you making? And he said, well, none. I said, well, then that's exactly what your opinion's worth. And the next house showing we went to, mom and dad did not show up. Now, they probably were still counseling her outside, but that is two approaches. You can go nicey nice, or you can go harsh. Um, I'm not recommending one over the other. Some work, some don't. Each client may be differently. You know, that might be a question that you may ask your first time home buyer when you sit down with them. Hey, who else is going to be helping you make this decision? Maybe we should bring them in. Or the others is, you know, listen to me, okay? Uh, one of the cons for new home buyers, obviously, is the shortage of money or income or credit or all three. They don't have the money uh, for down payment. They don't have a monthly income that warrants that house. There's nothing funnier to me in my mind that I hear when people go, well, I really, really, really want that house and I love it. My standard answer now is, dude, I love a Ferrari. I want a Ferrari, but I can't afford it. All right. You may want that big house that's on four acres and is 5,000 square feet, but dude, you can't afford it, all right? And obviously, being younger, they probably have some credit issues, meaning not enough credit, not bad. They could have bad credit, 
but it's typically they just don't have credit built yet. Uh, one final con, well, it's not a final, one other con is their lack of their procedural knowledge. They don't know what they need to do next. You know, they may say, okay, well, well, let's talk to an appraiser. Uh, well, dude, let's, let's actually put an offer in first. Uh, let's go see the house first. So you may have to guide them through all of that. Now, there's some other reasons, and this is probably going to be my number one reason on why I got kind of upset um, or disillusioned is what I'm going to label as the babysitting syndrome. <clears throat> you have held yourself out as the go-to person. We have talked about that. We're going to talk some more about that as being the person to go to because you understand this market, you understand the procedures. Well, you held yourself out as the go-to person. So guess what? They're going to go to you, which typically means phone calls at six o'clock on a Sunday night, you know, early morning phone calls, which ties into the next bullet point there, impatience. You are not going to be as vested in this as they are. And I'm not saying that in a hurtful way. What I'm trying to say is to them, it's a life goal to be uh, a homeowner. So when they're going to call you and go, hey, we love the house. We want to write an offer now. What are you doing? Well, it's my kid's birthday. It's six o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. What do you think I'm doing? They're going to be impatient because they want to get that house and make the offer now. They're excited, they're overwhelmed, they're impatient. And that comes with part of the babysitting syndrome. Now, if you're cool with those, more power to you. All right. I understand that. I also understand that I know that I'm not very good at that. All right. So I'll lay that out there and I know I see some of you squirming and laughing. Dude, that's okay, I get it. Um, we are not all going to be good agents in every area. I specialize in investment and commercial property, a lot more of what I call analytical decisions, a lot less emotions. I'm very good with numbers. I love those kind of deals not very good at the babysitting syndrome. Now, with your students, that's different though. <laughs> I'm going to say that right now. Because I love the education, babysitting syndrome doesn't seem to bother me when being the teacher of real university, all right? With that said, don't forget, you can email me questions <laughs> if you want at Raymond at realuniversity.com. So those are just a couple minutes there of the pros and cons. And I think one of the things you need to assess about yourself is, are the cons acceptable to you? Are the pros good enough for you? There is no harm in admitting, and you don't even have to admit, you don't have to come out to me. You don't have to come out to anybody. You just don't market to that group if you are not that person. Cool thumbs up for you at home that can't see me. Actually, I'm giving two thumbs up, so feel free. If you are that person, I commend you and applaud you and say, without the first time home buyer, you certainly don't get to investment properties or commercial properties or golf course properties or anything like that because they all got to start somewhere. All right, let's move on.